Hello and welcome back to MacUAT. In the third lecture of Control System Engineering, we are going to talk about closed loop automated antenna control system. In that, we will be controlling the position of the antenna by just changing the position of a small potentiometer to our desired angle. And as a result, we will getting the output, which will be the rotation of the huge and heavy antenna to its desired position. Let's have a look at the closed loop configuration, starting with the input, which is also most of the time termed as the reference value. The transducer tries to change the input into the form so that it can be understood by the controller while the controller controls the reaction of the plant to the received signals. The plant provides us with the output or the control variable which is thoroughly monitored by the feedback transducer. The feedback sends the signal back to the summing junction as negative while the input signal received in the summing junction will be taken as positive. Both of them will be compared and the difference will be known as error. Based on this error received, the controller will decide the reaction of the plant to a certain situation. If you want to know more about this configuration, click on the link in the top right corner uh, where we discuss the whole configuration Let's have a look at the components of the control antenna mechanism. So there are the major components which we are dealing with in this configuration. We will be needing two potentiometers. Both of them will be acting as transducer. The first potentiometer will be our input transducer which will be converted our set position or the desired angle into the form so that it can be understood by the controller while the second transducer will be our feedback transducer which will be monitoring the actual position of the antenna and sending the feedback all the way to the controller. The second major part is our comparator or the summing junction and controller where both the signals from both the transducers or received and compared by the summing junction and then they are sent to the controller as an error. The controller would decide based on this error and send a signal to our plant which is motor in this case. Motor would react to the received signal from the controller and decide which direction to rotate on in order to give us the output which is the position of our antenna. So these are the four major components that comprises the whole mechanism of controlling the antenna through a closed loop. Our final output would be the rotation of our, our antenna to our desired position. Now let's have a look at the configuration of the potentiometers. There are three major connections of a potentiometer starting from the left which is the input power. The middle one would be the output signal from the potentiometer while the one to the right will be grounded. It is nothing else but just a simple variable resistor where it is configured from 0 to 360 degree. And the input signal is received from the one to the left, which is the potential difference. And the output signal is taken from the middle one. This signal is then sent to the summing junction as an input or the positive value. We provide the input just by rotating the knob and setting our desired angle as calibrated. This rotation changes the resistance between the input 
and the output signal in the potentiometer. So it will either decrease the resistance or increase the resistance and based on that resistance the potential drop would change in the potentiometer and so will be the signal out of the potentiometer. Let's move from each part and see what happens in the system. Starting with the input which will be the position of potentiometer. This will obviously be controlled by the operator and it will be just the rotation of the potentiometer. The input transducer potentiometer would be converting the input position or the set angle into the form so that it can be understood by the controller as in this case the output signal from the potentiometer would be totally dependent on the potential drop or the resistance in the potentiometer as this resistance or the potential drop is set by the set angle of the potentiometer as the potential drop changes uh, with the position or the angle of the potentiometer and that's why the output signal would totally be according to our set position this output signal will be sent to the summing junction and it will be taken as positive the controller in this case is receiving the signal in the form of error and it will be sending a signal out to the plant which is a motor in this case and this signal will totally depend on that error signal received from the summing junction. The motor will be providing us with the desired position of the antenna which will be our final output of the system and it will be the rotation to our desired position. Now this position of the antenna would be continuously monitored by a feedback potentiometer or a feedback transducer. This position of the potentiometer would also be converted into the form so that it can be understood by the controller in the same way as it was with the input transducer. And the signal would be sent back all the way to the summing junction and it will be taken as negative. Now the input signal was the desired position while the feedback potentiometer signal is our actual position. The actual position is taken as negative while the desired position was taken as positive. The difference would be our error signal which is fed to the controller and based on this error the controller would decide the direction of rotation of the motor. Now according to the feedback logic control there are three possibilities that a motor can achieve. The first one is it either can rotate clockwise to get the antenna to the desired position. The second one is it can rotate counterclockwise for the antenna to achieve the desired position. And finally when it gets to the desired position, the motor needs to stop so that antenna can stay at its desired position. Let's go through each one of them. In the first case, and the input or the desired signal is received by the summing junction which is delta is positive and then the feedback signal from the feedback potentiometer which is generally taken as negative now let's say in the first case our error is positive which is the difference between the desired value and the actual output now in this case it is positive that means our negative value is quite lower than the desired value. So the logic would be sent to the controller. It will be binary logic in form of 1, 0 or 0, 1. And based on this received logic, the controller would decide the polarity of the motor so that it can rotate in a certain direction. And the purpose of that, that direction would be to increase the negative value or to increase the actual output 
to the desired output so that the error could get zero instead of positive. In the second case, let's say our error is negative. That means the negative value is more than the positive value or in other words our actual output is quite more than our desired output. So we need to reduce our actual output. So in that case again the binary logic would be sent to the controller and based on that received logic the controller would decide the polarity of the system or polarity of the plant. In this case it is a motor which will be certainly the reversing the direction of the motor so that the negative value could be reduced to the desired value or the actual value of the output can be reduced to the desired value so that the error get to zero. Finally, if the error gets zero somehow, then the controller has to stop the flow of power to the motor or to the plant so that the antenna can stay at its position because it's actual position is equal to the desired position and that's why we need its rotation to stop at that position because the desired position has been achieved. So these are the three possible logics for the rotation of the antenna. That was all for our control uh, closed loop automated antenna. This concludes our chapter number one. Uh, in the next lecture we will be starting chapter number two which is modeling in the frequency domain thank you so much for watching if you still have any issue please do comment i would be more than glad to answer if you liked my video please hit that thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe would really appreciate the support wishing you the best of luck